Stanley Services sponsors Falklands in Focus. So this is where we, we fil filmed the opening of the very first show. Um, so the show was split. We went from the opening titles straight into um, like pieces to camera around, dotted around Stanley in places. And then um, we went into the newsroom um, and then did all the like, very newsy stuff and then came out and did the packages afterwards. So this, this is it, this is where oh. This is me. This is where I did it. Oh. It was round here, sorry, because it was a different time of day, so the sun wouldn't be in your eyes. Um, yeah, and I think I was here in a pink jacket like this. And how do you feel 10 years on? I tell you what, I, I remember doing it. I remember it being taking so long. It was Vanessa who was filming me. And I'm doing it now, actually. I'm looking over there because... Um, I was looking over there because there was no auto cue. So um, I had to remember all my lines and I hate remembering lines. So I was looking over there all the time. We did it about eight times, I think. How and each you do time- How without an auto cue? I was gonna say, it must be quite difficult. It was horrible. It was horrible because I'd always forget something. And actually in later episodes, I remember uh, we'd have some sign language um, for <laughs> what was coming up. And motocross. Thank you, Paula. Still to come. Fire engine pull. <laughs> um, Christmas bauble make. Fire engine pull and highlights of the motocross. Before all of that, here's our short advert break. <laughs> Fire engine pull. <laughs> well, actually, it was really busy. I remember that. It was really, really busy because we were trying desperately to get to be everywhere, to be all places, cover everything. And there was only, it was just me and Liz at the start. Yeah, it was really, it was really, really hard, really hard. I'm gonna do this in one. If you do this in one, I'll film the Fitzroy service name. Okay, you, have you got it on record? Do you have it on record then? Is that recording? Excellent. You heard it folks, if I do this in one, Mark's doing it naked. Okay, we're ready. At Fitzroy. At Fitzroy. <laughs> in the snow. In the snow. Before the United Nations special comic. Sorry, go back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Vanessa Edwards, who came down from the UK, and also Andy Marsh, who was a camera guy, to sort of help us put the programme in some kind of semblance of order so we it looked like a proper programme. So we had this idea that it would be, uh, there'd be opening titles which we paid for and music which we paid for and then it would go into a, somebody presenting from a venue around town and then it would then go from there, they would throw into the newsroom and then there'd be a newsie on a, you know, like a desk kind of thing um, with, a, with a virtual background, so a virtual uh, newsroom and then it would come back to the person presenting the programme and we'd go on from there. <laughs> so Ben, you're doing this fun run. Do you know where you've got to run to? No. So Louis, tell us how you got into skating. Um, I don't really know. I think... That's not what you just told me. You just told me it was yeah. because of your brother. Yeah, yeah. Alright, let's start that one again then. Early on, I think it was in the first year, there was a film crew that had come down from America called Hit and Run Histories, I think they were called. And um, they, were a, they were on Saunders Island, they got fogged in, so they couldn't make their flight back to the States. Um, so they came and we sort of was, were with them for a little bit. Um, and that was when you could go to the top of the um, lighthouse and actually be on the little open bit at the top. I think I've seen this infamous clip where it's blowing up a hoolie. It absolutely, but I'm terrified. I, I hate it. I hate going through it. I hate walking up those stairs where you can see through. Mm. And that's what the, the lighthouse was. So Mark went up first and I 
and then I think the hit and run history went behind me and I went up in the middle and I was, I was shaking. I hated every single second of it. Welcome back. Look who I found at the top of the lighthouse, a stranded American film crew. They're waiting for their, no, they're wait, they're waiting. They're waiting for their flight back. Your hair's looking fine. Thank you. Welcome back. Look what I found at the top of the lighthouse. It's the stranded American film crew waiting for their flight back. <laughs> You're not waiting for it here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> but they were a really good bunch of people. Uh, in fact, I think there's some outtakes there because my, my, my eyes started running and he went, are you crying? And I went, well, not yet, but, uh, you know, <laughs> very close to. Hated it. We can do some going down the steps. No, we couldn't. You're not crying, are you? No, not yet. Um, and then we did one time, we went down to the Murrell um, and did our, did the link, this is what we called links when you sat here and went out, and did, you know, on Thursday, there was such and such thing. So we went down to the Murrell farm and we came back and it was, it, something went wrong, like the card had corrupted or, or something. Anyway, Mark and I went back down to the Murrell farm later on in the day and the sun was just setting. It was like that gold now, you know when the, you know when the light is just perfect? And we, and we stood there doing the links there. Um, and it was just absolutely glorious, absolutely glorious. For some reason I'm holding a crochet book and I can't remember <laughs> why, but there was a reason I had to have it. Um, and then the sheep came and the ducks, and there was this duck that was trying to get under my feet. As long as they don't start to peck me, we'll be all right. Right, let's get on to the next one. <laughs> And then Mark says something like, uh, just watch behind you. And I turn round and I register that there's a cow coming, mm -hmm. but I didn't really register how close it was. Um, and then the next minute I look, it's like right here. And it's got these huge horns. It was horrible. In the Murrell farm, get down. <laughs> Nearly trod on that duck then. Coming up on this week's show. <laughs> can't have you snorting on that because I'm going straight into traditional farmers <laughs> there's a wide variety of things you get involved with so one day it could be you sat for the entire day editing up pieces that you filmed the next day you could be out in the wind and the wet and the cold filming the dog trials um, and then the following day you could be out in the sunny sunny kidney island filming loads of wildlife you know there's a wide variety of things to do and to cover and, and to speak to people. Um, when I was being good, it was an interesting arrival to the Falklands because obviously when I got here I had to quarantine for two weeks so I think that was definitely the calm before the storm um, because I had two weeks of sitting in the Malvina and not having anything to do and then I got out of quarantine and it's been pretty much non-stop ever since. Um, so it's quite good, it's a lot busier, the Falklands are a lot busier than I thought they would be to be honest um, but it's quite good and I think sort of throwing yourself into the deep end um, and just being able to do a whole load of different things is really fun, really enjoyable. When we arrived, it was literally a case of you're thrown in at the deep end. Do you know, I had no idea what to expect. Um, we, because we do everything here in, in our role, it's, it's difficult to know how to schedule your, your time and things change every day with the job, um, which is probably one of the reasons why I love it. Um, but at the same time, it was like, I've never experienced this before. Um, it's uh, difficult because you're not only taking on a new job, but you're taking on a new lifestyle and a new routine and a new social life because initially you're living with the people you work with. You're also doing stories and things that you wouldn't normally report on. Um, from hard news to soft news. And then on top of that, you've got to figure out what you're gonna do with your your like routine and friends and social life and it's a lot, it's overwhelming initially. And and then you've got also that fact that you're so used to being at home or having family near and then you don't. Um, and I never thought when I first started, I thought, oh right, that's a year, I'll be here a year, that'll be it. Three years later, still here. Um, and I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, that was also part of the appeal of the job, was it, it was so varied and do different things. Because um, 
I've never, I've not really been sure which area of journalism I want to go into other than TV. So I knew that's what the form of media I wanted to be in, but I don't know where I want to end up. So for me, it's ideal because I still get to do things, go and interview the MLAs, I get to film wildlife, I get to go do all sorts of different things. And so every day is different, which is what I enjoy and part of the reason why I wanted to be a journalist in the first place. We'll see you after the break. Da, 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 da. Adverts, 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 adverts. Ooh, lovely. See you after the break. And then, of course, with an ad break in the middle, because that's always a you know, source of income, um, because we are self, -gen we have to generate our own income. So that's from um, adverts, uh, doing external projects and subscriptions and sponsorship. And you made some of the adverts yourself, didn't you? I mean, I remember there's uh, one. That we had to make, yeah, we had to make all the adverts ourselves, because you've got to. I think at the start, I think people were sending in still images, and that was great because they could make them on Photoshop or publish or whatever. And that was fine. We had those to start off with. Um, but yeah, you needed a moving advert, really. So we started doing moving adverts. It's so difficult to do. It's so difficult to do. Um, because I'm not, I'm not an advertising person, you know? It, it's just... <laughs> what, what was your favourite advert that you made? I can think of one in my head that's one of my favourites. Which was your favourite? <laughs> the Mark Spruce uh, In The Shed barbecue one. Naked Chef, that's my favourite. <laughs> Mark Spruce is a legend. He is so funny. He is like, to people of a certain age, he's like a John Noakes, you know? Mark, can you go and film this, this memorial at the top of some mountain somewhere? Can you go and film it? Yeah, I will. Off he goes, <laughs> comes back. Um, so, so we were doing some adverts for Stanley Services Shop and they had some barbecue stuff coming in. And it's, you know what the weather's like here, and we couldn't do a barbecue, and I didn't have a barbecue, and oh, it's just... So I think we used Liz's mother's shed, and um, he, he pretended to barbecue. He wasn't naked, he actually had a, an apron on and he had jeans on, but we filmed it in such a way to make it look like he was naked, um, and put a warning underneath it as well. Then uh, my girls were around and they both tap dancers, so we did some tap dancing in the in the shop. Again, it wasn't great because the sound, because you got the sound of the fridges and freezers constantly droning in the background. <laughs> wasn't there one that you did in the, um, the leisure centre swimming pool? Yeah. Well, your your <laughs> favourite one. <laughs> the leisure centre swimming pool, I don't really want to talk about that because I was really cross about <laughs> it. Because I had like three people lined up to be in the gym, be in the, the big hall and be in the pool. And when we got there, they basically, two of them had gone, no, we're not doing it. And it was just left to Dan Biggs to do it all. So this poor lad who I'd never met before in my life, it's like, well, we've got one take for you to go in the swimming pool and that's it. Because once you're wet, you're wet. And we can't, you know, so one take to get in there. I think some, one of the teachers from school, we didn't have an underwater camera then. So one of the teachers from school had lent me their underwater camera. So it's like hoping that it was in the right position. The white balance is completely off. The white balance is hideous. And I tried correcting it and it was just rubbish. It's just early days. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, there was another one, because there was a guy called Ben Greer down and he was um, to do with helicopters. And he was doing all this kind of fitness stuff to mm. raise funds for the Stephen Jaffray Memorial Fund. So he was in the, it was great because there was him and the, he was best mates with the uh, physical guy at uh, Hillside, the gym guy. Um, so the two of them did the half marathon and they did the marathon. So it was great because we could follow them and the viewer knew who they were when we went, I'm here with Ben Greer at the marathon. I, you know, it was brilliant. Um, anyway, so we did this like 10,000 push-ups and 5,000, <laughs> all these kind of, all, all this stuff. Anyway. We did him a favour because we were promoting it and he wanted to get more, more money, so that's great. Um, and I needed somebody to do an advert for the Malvina. Uh, no, f it was for Decor Services, for the ah, carpet. The carpet, I was going to say the, the carpet, carpet advert. advert. Yeah, so um, I said to him, would you mind being involved in this carpet advert? And he said yes. And then I needed um, a, a young woman with him because it was going to be like, the idea was to have this like romantic moment between these two people. He didn't have a girlfriend here, unfortunately, so I couldn't use her. 
Um, but my neighbour's daughter was down, who's in her 20s, um, and they'd never met before. And I just plonked them on this sofa with this camera. We were at Mark Spruce's parents' house because they would just had a decor services carpet put in. Um, and they sat there and I wouldn't give them alcohol. So they've got lemonade with yellow food colouring in because I wouldn't like wine. to look like champagne. And they're sitting there talking to each other. Um, and they'd never met each other. And it, it's really quite difficult if, you've, if you're not an actor and you've, and you've never met somebody before. To be suddenly Intimate really <laughs> close to them, it's really quite disturbing. So, But they did a really good job. And again, I didn't know what I was doing. So I had, we had to do so many takes on different settings on the camera and mm. different frame rates and different irises and, and all different lighting. In, ca in character, in character. Mm. <laughs> Should we take this somewhere more comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> I did it! I did it! <clears throat> no, not yet. <laughs> um, but I bet they knew each other quite well by the end though. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out alright. Anyway, after that I said, um, by the way, I now need somebody to be in the jacuzzi. <laughs> And they're both good-looking people. Yeah. Um, would you go in a jacuzzi together? I went, OK. <laughs> so we went into this jacuzzi. Not so much a big long take on that because I was worried about the, the dampness on the camera, but it worked out all right. Um, and then not long after that, that aired, um, and not long after that, I went to Weddell to go and do some filming on Weddell. Mm -hmm. And Jane and Martin Beaton were there. And I told them about this advert that I'd just done. And uh, Martin said, we've got a decor services carpet in the house and the old carpet is in the peat shed. I said, oh, do you think you would, you'd do me another? So we did this spoof <laughs> advert of them in their peat shed um, using sort of roughly around the, the same kind of script. Can we go somewhere a bit more comfortable? Okay, yes, but only if it is a decor services carpet. Monte's classic wines represent outstanding value for everyday drinking. Monte's wines at Stanley Services.
Welcome back. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? It looks like you're in a Saturday night game show. Welcome back. All right. She left and walk out shot. Two or three times, so just. Mom, can we have a realistic head? I just do this. Is that what you do when you go into a hotel room? Yes, everyone does. I'm not going to lie, it was incredibly stressful in the early days because there wasn't enough of us to do things. I remember we did a programme and it was a little bit lengthy than any other programme we've ever done. I think it was like knocking on 40 minutes. and it exported like it would normally do, but I couldn't transfer it from the machine onto the USB stick for Mario then to put it on KTV. Um, and it just wouldn't work, so I exported it loads of times. It still wouldn't work. And we were so frustrated. I mean, I was here until about 11, 12 o'clock at night, just re-exporting and re-exporting, and I had no idea. And then I managed to get an article up on, on Google about anything that was over four gigs in size wouldn't move from a computer to USB. <laughs> and that's all it was. I'm Paula Foams. I'm Liz Roberts. I'm Pat Pratlett. I'm Liz Roberts. I'm Paula Foams. I'm Liz Roberts. I'm Matthew Salt. I'm Paula Foams. I'm Sherry Willis. I'm Josh Saunders. I'm Caroline Scott. I'm Hannah Smithson. I'm Paula Foams. I'm Nancy Locke. With me, Paul Zeller. And me, Sophie Dolson. With me, Glenn College. And me, Sophie Dolson. I'm Paula Foams. With me, Stephen Hope. And me, Jake Dix. With me, Stephen Hope. And me, Mulder Shakita. I'm James Page. And I'm Federica Degani. I'm James Page. And I'm Triana Smith. I'm Triana Smith. And I'm Michelle Winard. And I'm Chris Waters. I'm Thomas Stockting. And I'm Paula Foams. I'm Chris Waters. And I'm Paula Foams. I'm Thomas Stockting. And I'm Michelle Winard. I'm Paula Foams. And I'm Hannah Newton. I'm Thomas Stockting. And I'm Katie Beatty. I'm Dan McGill. And I'm Paula Foams. I'm Tyrone Henry. And I'm Katie Beatty. And I'm Dan McGill. And I'm Hannah Newton. I'm David Bailey. And I'm Paula Foams. I'm Steve Foam. And I'm Paula Foams. I'm Oliver Thompson. And I'm Kyle Nappett. I'm Kyle Nappett. And I'm Hannah Newton. I'm Oliver Thompson. And I'm Paula Foams. I can't feel my feet. <laughs> uh, I think it was 2013 we had the first um, intern came down, um, and that was Sherry Willis. She arrived, I think it was the day before the referendum. God, day. Um, yeah, so that was sorry. a massive day, yeah. massive day. Um, loads of people here, Sky, AP, everything. That was when I first met Paul from AP. Um, and we got in his good books because I saved him a space. <laughs> <laughs> the announcement of the referendum right at the front. So um, we were best pals after that. Um, yeah, so she came then. Um, not long after that, Jamie came along for a little while, Jamie Gallant. After that, we had our first sort of set of people. So Caroline came and then there was Josh Saunders. Welcome to your weekly 60... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Direct, <laughs> welcome to your weekly 60 second news update. Okay. Welcome back to FITV News. I'm Josh Saunders, uh, the station's former host from 2013 until 2014. Um, as far as my highlights go, um, there are almost too many to mention. Um, from starring in the um, the potato advert, which I'm sure will be teased in this clip, um, to to peat cutting uh, with the Moffat family, uh, to later covering the Commonwealth Games. Um, it was a, a phenomenal experience, and and personally, I felt really lucky to to have been able to do it. It was an absolute pleasure to to spend time with the FITV team and also to, to get to know uh, many of you. Um, it's certainly been an experience that I've, I've never forgot and uh, hold with me to this day. Um, 
still on a regular basis um I, I do talk about the Falklands and despite being warned against becoming a Falklands bore uh, which was described to me as someone who constantly talks about the Falklands um I can't help but slip in a few funny stories here and there so first of all, I want to say congratulations to Steve and Paula and the current employees of FITV and all the previous uh, employees of FITV for 10 years of FITV. Um, it's super impressive, uh, but it doesn't surprise me that it's still going strong um, because it's such a great TV station that produces quality content. Um, so for me personally, FITV was such an amazing experience. It was an opportunity to, to um, live in a new country and experience a new lifestyle make great friends and um, progress in my career. Uh, I still work in TV production now and FITV was very much my first job in TV that gave me the confidence to move forward, gave me an opportunity to um, practice many different skills including presenting, editing, filming. Um, it was basically just freedom, uh, a job that gave me so much freedom to practice exactly what I wanted to practice. Um, I still remember the first day I arrived there and I still think about all my experiences at, in the Falkland Islands every day. Um, it was such a, a, a momental moment of my life and um, yeah, I'll never forget it. And hopefully I can come back soon um, because I really did adore uh, my time in the Falkland Islands. For me personally, my favourite kind of things um, in the island was, well, nature. There's so many beautiful places. In, in the island. Um, the job itself was such a great job, you know, going out and filming, hearing stories from around the island, meeting new people. And I also just missed the island itself, just living in Stanley and, you know, seeing seeing the people live there and uh, being part of the community, going to the local pubs and um, enjoying the lifestyle there. Um, so yeah, there's so many things that is great about the, the, the job at FITV and um, I hope that anyone that does it in the future gets to experience the same things that I did. And again, like I said, congratulations to you guys for 10 years um, and I'm wishing you all the success for the future. Then in, a, in addition to that team, um, years ago, and I can't remember how many years ago, Dan McGill was pointed out to us um, through the training centre that he had an interest in animation. Now, we are a small company, TV company. We can't really afford to have somebody just as an animator working for us, but he had fantastic um, camera skills that he learned. He was great at animation and he had a voice, absolutely gorgeous voice. He's the voice behind the Monty's advert, isn't he? He's the, the voice Services. behind the Stanley Services Monty's advert. He's the voice behind quite a few things that we've had going, actually. For August's opening titles. Hello and welcome to Falklands in Focus. I'm Dan McGill and there's no more script to read unfortunately. We seem to have reached the bottom of the auto queue. Okay. What a good like, voice. And, so hasn't it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's got a lot of character in it as well as being... And, and, and the, the, the yeah. level is just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. He's done a lot of the animations for the Harbour Light Cinema the penguin and what you've got to remember is these are all things that are built from scratch so he makes a skeleton of the penguin and then he wraps a body around it and then it's texture on top and things like that it's a very long convoluted process to do it's not an easy thing when Dan left us um, we had we'd had Tom in as work experience actually from from the community school and he was very interested in animation he'd got Blender and he was doing stuff on Blender himself. So when Dan left, we were able to have Tom in his place. We still had that um, continuity with animations. Slightly different style, style. that they've mm. got, but um, it's still it's still so good for us to have that animation that's there. Um, he does animations for the end of the programmes, the eye dents at the end of the programme. He also does any kind of animation that we need in packages. If we've you know, <laughs> run out of B-roll or got anything to <laughs> package it or we want something to illustrate stats or something, he does that. He's also great at camera work. He's a, he's a really reliable camera person. Um, we haven't got him in front of camera. He's not that keen to do that. But, you know, as a camera person, as a techie, he's, he's very, very good. Um, well, when I first started the job, I, I mean, I knew it was a small team that I was coming into, but what was quite interesting was 
only having been here since sort of out of quarantine since October over Christmas time it was just up with me and Ollie doing doing the work because everyone else is in the UK and there was one week where it was just me and I didn't expect to within sort of three months of starting a job be running the news for a week and doing that by myself so that was quite interesting but um, I think it's things like that you sort of realise that you can do a lot more than you possibly think you can when you first start so that was quite fun because I was a bit like oh my god I've been left with the TV by myself with the TV station for a week like this is gonna be a disaster the news program's just gonna be me sat crying on the sofa um and I actually managed to put out quite a long show and it went okay so um yeah I think just realizing that you know you, you can do stuff is great um and story-wise I mean we've done some pretty cool stuff so when I first got here obviously I've not really lived with a mind a Falklands that has mines in for very long because it was only like a few weeks but getting to film the final demining was pretty great so that that was quite fun um, a very historic occasion for the Falkland Islands so that was a pretty good highlight. I think the main the huge the biggest thing at the moment I have FITV to thank for as well as you know it did develop those skills those camera skills and those people skills with the interviews and, and that sort of thing but actually just getting me to the Falkland Islands in the first place like I said, I'm still here. I love it here. Um, you know, I, I'm absolutely, absolutely settled in my in my role here and in my life here in the Falklands at the moment. So, yeah, just that first step of getting me on the plane because it's not somewhere you you particularly would always think of coming to. Um, and yeah, and to give me that opportunity to come into the community and yeah, to to set up here is yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So working at FITV, it's been. It is an amazing experience um, and like I say you get a wide variety of people to speak to and you do get to develop your skills both personally and professionally um, and it gives you the option as well to venture in which type of TV you would prefer to be in so you don't you're not just focused on and production post-production you're not just focused on editing you sometimes have to go out and film produce the story yourself edit up yourself and uh, present it on the, on the news channel so and in, in court reporting as well so there's loads of different areas of TV that you can go in and, and experience and, and experiment with yourself you know obviously it's got to be to a high quality as FITV is but it's a really good opportunity to, to see different areas of filmmaking and news uh, broadcasting um, but yeah in terms of working for FITV I've absolutely loved it in terms of my colleagues have been great to work with um, and as well I've felt that I have learnt a lot of things here whilst working here and as well given a lot of things back so it's kind of a really really good relationship. When you work somewhere like FITV um, you're not put into one role you have to take on multiple different roles and um, which pushes you to explore different areas of the career that you've originally chosen so actually choosing something a favourite moment is quite difficult. I mean, I originally came down with an intent to just work on camera, but that wasn't possible just because of the small team and the amount of work that you have to be able to produce. And I turned, it turned out that I did actually start liking, towards the end, more of the, the news and presenting and making news packages. Um, but definitely one, of, one that stands out was one of my first assignments, which was to go and cover, um, go and cover a large whale that had washed up quite a while before and was it was it had unfortunately died and it was decaying on the beach and that was one of my first roles so I can definitely think back to the smell of um, unfortunately rotting carcass which isn't very nice but that does stick out it was also a great weekend got to see summer of the Falklands um, out in camp which I'd never experienced before and then one of my second favorite experiences would be after not long after being in the role, just a few months, I was sent over to Chile with the youth ice hockey teams and I got to cover their entire tournament. So that was two weeks of spending a lot of time with the youth hockey teams and covering the event, making videos, daily reports, and that was a lot of fun.
the Malvina House Gin is now available to buy at Stanley Services. So in about sort of 2014, 2015, I think, we decided we would try going twice a week because the idea was that perhaps eventually we could do a bulletin each night um, and sort of work our way up to it. So we started to go twice a week. We had um, Glenn, Sophie, Paul, um, me and Dan working for us at that time. So there were five of us. Um, Paul, such a quick editor, such a quick editor. He, we filmed the Legislative Assembly once, so that was the Thursday morning. On the Friday, I said to him something about um, the edit of it, and he went, it's done, it's exporting, and he, he, he'd done it already. And that was in the days of Final Cut Pro 7, <laughs> Hannah. The, you know, it was before we had Premiere Pro and Multicam <laughs> and stuff like that, he'd done it all like that. Um, so, so, so quick. Uh, Glenn, oh, his shots are just phenomenal. Even now, I can look at some footage on the NAS drive and I know that he'd filmed it because his composition is just beautiful and um, he when you filmed with him so she was doing a piece to camera so he'd set it all up you know we go yeah we're ready he'd just go three two one and if you don't have KTV you can subscribe and watch online anywhere you have an internet connection just go to fitv.co.fk and click on our channel it's nearly time for the film to start. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with I'm you? I'm not good at this. Continuing <laughs> our lead up to the charity ball on September the 21st, following today's news bulletin that we have the second of our special features. What, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay this time. Too many, too many words on the news. Hello, and welcome to Focus. Start and again, I was looking at oh. <clears throat> On Saturday the 30th of July, there will be a Gurkha evening at the Parish Hall. Doors open at 5.45pm and the evening will kick off with a presentation on Gurkha history, followed by an auction of Gurkha items and a raffle. I'll do that. Where do you want to start from? From the beginning. Uh. Now I can... Oh yeah, yeah. Right, go. On Saturday the 30th of July, there will be a Gurkha evening at the Parish Hall. Doors open at 5.45pm and the evening will kick off with a presentation on Gurkha history followed by an auction of Gurkha items and a raffle. This will be followed by a Gurkha curry. <laughs> Shall I say Gurkha less? <laughs> Doors open at 5.45pm and the evening will kick off with a presentation on Gurkha. Gurkha doors will open at... What the Gurkha will right. <clears throat> On Saturday the 30th of July, there will be a Gurkha evening at the Parish Hall. On Saturday the 30th of July, there will be a Gurkha evening at the Parish Hall. Doors open at 5.45pm and the evening will kick off with a presentation on Gurkha history, followed by an auction of Gurkha <laughs> items. <laughs> How about just all the time so and a curry? No, because stand over here. here. <laughs> right, go I'm on. I'm going to record it like this now. So. <laughs> On Saturday the 30th of July, there'll be a Gurkha evening at the Parish Hall. Doors open at 5.45pm and the evening will kick off with a presentation on Gurkha history, followed by an auction of Gurkha items and a raffle. This will be followed by a Gurkha... <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be dressed as well, you know, we do, we do all, all the memorials in the middle of winter where we're standing <laughs> for ages. You've got to be warm, so we need, to, you know, everyone makes sure they've got hats and gloves boiler suits or just very, very thick wintry coats, big boots on, because, you know, if you get cold, I remember 2012, the um, liberation for 2012, mm. absolutely chucked it with snow, absolutely chucked it with snow. 
I'm in a boiler suit. I'm toasty. loving it. Absolutely <coughs> toasty, I am. Uh, we had three points because we'd been to, I'd been to the UK the, the, sort of the year before to sort of think, find out who was going to come, went to see BBC, went to see ITV. Um, BBC said they were definitely sending someone down, so that was fine. So we made contact with them. Um, and they said, Where, where's the best place to stand? So I said, this is where we'll be standing. So they were only sending one camera when they, when they carried it live. But um, So he stood next to me um, on the westerly side of the monument. So we had a scaffolding up and took a, a high point. Um, Phil Middleton did the commentary on it for us. In Excellent, he knows everything there is to know about what's going on there. Um, Liz was on that stand and the snow, of course, was coming in from the west. So the BBC and I were like, this is great because we're covered in snow at the back, but our lenses are beautifully clear <laughs> and we can see everything. Whereas Reuters and ITV, they had just snow, snow in their lens. And I think our locked off shot as well, we had snow, snow in that lens as well. So every so often a finger, gloved finger comes <laughs> and wipes the lenses. <laughs> yeah. So we went to twice a week. We had a virtual newsroom on a Tuesday, and then we did, which we called Falklands New oh, FITV News, and then on a Friday we did on the sofa a little bit more relaxed um, Falklands in focus. But you, you know, the news is happening all the time. So there was some serious stuff, and it was such a difficult thing to do. With we are still a small team to produce that news on a Tuesday and we were still using Final Cut Pro. It was really difficult. We're against a green screen. The green is like all different colours. It's not a proper green. It's not lit the evenly. Green glow. It's just, <laughs> yeah, so you've got like this ready breath glow around us all. Um, I'd like, I was taking like four or five samples of green to get the green out. Um, so we, we stopped doing that and we just went for um, more like a BBC breakfast kind of thing. So we're on the sofas and we went for hard news at the top and then as it went round, we're roughly on about half an hour, as we went round, um, it just easier, um, more, more community-based uh, stories at the end. The orange sofa came about because I went down to So What and that's the only colour they had a lot of. So that's why it's orange and actually I like it orange because it's mm. bright um, when you look back at footage when it was grey or when it was blue it just doesn't look right it's quite dark um, and we all tend to wear well you know you tend to wear sort of dark suits or very plain sort of dull colours so then when you've got that sofa in your face orange works in your face orange you works yeah <laughs> we had a rebrand um, oh gosh I can't remember about 2015 I think it was we did a rebrand from the red, green, blue, yellow FITV logo in Arial to the orange and white. Um, and it just worked out so well because at the time we were using um, some standardised um, strap lines from Final Cut that were orange and white. Um, and it was just staring at us in the face that that should be our logo. And actually you can see it from a distance better. It's a lot brighter. Um, so we went with the orange and luckily everything just went in together. We had orange sofa as well. I'm looking over there because that's where it is. There's so many stories I've done and also like there have been stories that happen every year, you know, events and stuff that happen every year and then you report on them. But also there's trips that you get to go on and in no other job in the world would you get to, to go to such amazing places as if you were, in, unless you were here. Do you know, the people you meet, um, scientists, politicians, you know, the governor, there's so many different people in different job roles. If you're in the UK doing this job, you wouldn't have that open door opportunity to go and interview those kind of people so easily. Some of the trips that have been the highlights, obviously, I've got to say, going to South Georgia was absolutely amazing. I never thought that was going to happen. I would also say, again, I did a trip to Port Howard um, with some dolphins. That was within my first year of arriving. Um, and I'd never done anything like that before. You're going out, you're filming every day, you're coming back with mountains of footage. You're, you're behind the camera the whole time, do you know, you're constantly, and then you come back and think, what on earth am I doing with all this stuff? Um, and it's, 
it's fun. Like, it doesn't feel like work when you, you do those kind of things. Yeah, I do think back to FITV. I mean, every time I see one of the FITV people out with a camera, I do think back sometimes of like, oh, I do miss playing around with cameras and um, doing the opportunities that they do. Um, but in general, I mean, I don't, I don't think back too much like I've missed anything. And um, I am enjoying the career that I'm in now. My favourite area of the, that sort of new production and film production, I really liked the pre-production and the, the production bits of so the researching, the talking to people, getting that sort of story and that idea sorted. The going out and filming it, um, yeah, absolutely love that, that sort of technical aspect of filming. I definitely fair to say that my least favourite bit was back in the office editing, um, sitting in front of the computer and the, the technical side of putting that all together. and. I'm not cut out to be um, in front of a computer too long. I'm not particularly great at that. You know, if it throws up a big problem, some people love diving into, well, why did it do that today and not another day? I, I just want it to work. And video editing rarely works that straightforward. Um, so yeah, I definitely preferred being researching and then being out in the field. Um, once I got back into the office, it was plenty of coffee to see me through. The first bit, um, I mean, it wasn't the first piece, but the piece that I, I would take forever is the demining. Absolutely, I absolutely loved it. You know, surveying um, and talking to people. I've talked to so many people about the demining project, and I remember doing the piece at York Bay when they reclaimed the beach, and I was sat there, you know, flying the drone, which was great. But there were people there much older than me that were upset and crying, and it was quite emotional for them to go on York Bay for the first time for 38 years. Um, and obviously for me, I, you know, I'm a bit younger, so I didn't, I haven't experienced that. But it just shows the, the fact that a lot of the pieces that you do is emotional for, pe for other people and it does make a difference to other people as well, um, to raise their stories and raise awareness of the Demining Project, which was quite an amazing, amazing programme to, to do. I think I've been quite lucky uh, in the fact that I've been having the opportunity to go to a lot of the islands, the outer islands and film and, you know, do find out much about the wildlife and a bit more around, around camp and around the outer islands, which was great. And that'll stand by me forever. For instance, king penguin hatching, filming that, uh, elephant seal being born, two elephant seals fighting, uh, two bull seals fighting each other. And just talking to people in, in a different community that I'm not very used to, not, haven't been very used to. Um, yeah, but I think going to the islands has definitely been a standout point at the moment. When Glenn and Paul came on board, they are film and TV production and they're more cameramen. So I noticed our, the quality of what we were filming suddenly went up, you know, and, the, um, and it sort of coincided then with some, we invested our first, our, for our second set of cameras at that point. So we had much better cameras. And the technology, it's just moved on so much over the years, you know, it's, it's, when we think back at those cameras, which Thomas Stockton lovingly referred to as the potato cameras, um, you know, we've moved on so much from there. And especially now, especially for me, I can't carry an 11 kilo tripod and then a 12 kilo camera and everything else I need. Um, so f to have a phone that films in 4K that's so light and easy and you've suddenly got broadcast quality camera work that you're doing just on a phone. And there's been quite a few packages that we have managed to film that have just all been done on a phone and it's just been so much easier. So much easier to get there. People are a little bit more um, open to speaking to you because you haven't got this massive camera in their face. Um, so, you know, technology has, has moved on. We're now in HD. You know, when we first started, that was just not an option at all. The equipment was far too expensive. We moved online. I mean, that was a revolution, being online. You can watch that anywhere in the world, you know? Anywhere you've got an internet connection, you've got access to FITV. It's, admittedly, we're not putting out the HD package, because that would be gigabytes of stuff. Um, it's usually between 300 and 500 megabytes um, and it's, it's online, so anyone can watch it wherever they've got an internet connection.
Montes Alpha M. Extremely limited in production. Perfectly balanced, full-bodied and voluptuous. Montes Wines at Stanley Services. Hello, it's been roughly five years since I was living in Stanley working for FITV and it really did change my career afterwards. I learned a little bit about the technical aspect of broadcasting whilst at FITV, which actually led to me being offered an apprenticeship with BTTV, where for the past four years I've been living in Ipswich, Suffolk, learning all about network and software design. I worked on the Global Media Network, which actually pushes content from the UK down towards the Falkland Islands. And then this past October, I completed a four-year degree in computer science. I was then made a manager at BT Sports, and I'm now a designer on the Premier League delivery network. So any English or Scottish Premier League you a game you see in the Falkland Islands actually came through one of my systems. I really do miss the Falklands. I really hope to visit again one day, maybe after COVID. And... Although I don't work in front or behind the camera anymore, I do still work within the TV world, and that I really love. I keep in, yeah, I keep in touch with quite a few of them uh, who have worked for us and have, have now moved on. Um, you know, they're, they've got busy lives. Sophie's at ITV, you know, fantastic. Uh, Thomas was with us for, I think, two and a half, three years. He's now in Canada uh, doing something with... I can't remember what company he works for, but he's over there. Um, Stephen went to BT. Uh, Josh was at Caters for a long time and was in New York for, for a while as well. Um, Caroline did loads of stuff for journalism.co.uk. Um, they've all done really, really well. I think that one of the main skills that FITV gave me was confidence in being able to come down and actually put all the skills that I'd previously learned at college and university into practice. And like I said, pushing you out of your comfort zone and forcing you just because of the circumstances um, that you're in, forcing you to go ahead and to push yourself and to um, do things that you wouldn't necessarily have thought that you were capable or you were able to do. And their support was always really great for that. Well, I think for me, like obviously when I applied, I expected to be here a year, get as much, um, learn as many skills as I could in everything, in presenting, in screenwriting, in doing the filming and editing and stuff like that, and then promote myself and go elsewhere, because that's what the job initially was and, and is to an extent. It's all right, you stay a year, you soak everything up like a sponge, and then you go off into the big wide world. Um, but for me, I've been lucky because I've, I think I've kind of, I've grown um, a loyalty to the company, I would say. I don't know, it's almost like a baby. To, like, I don't want to, I don't want to see it fail. I don't, I want the company to grow and I don't want to leave <laughs> anytime soon, um, hopefully. You don't join us and you're a runner and making tea and coffee. You join us, you are working you're doing the same stuff that you did at university but now you're doing it for a television a national television station you know the way i edit and the way that i create stuff i'm i'm not the most organized person in the world and i tend to i'll try and have a structure or an idea to my story before i go out and film but then sometimes obviously you can't predict what you're going to see and then sometimes when you're filming, you see stuff and you're like, actually, I'm going to go down that angle or this is really cool. And then what I try to do is, it's almost like putting a jigsaw puzzle um, pieces together. At the end, you've got all your footage, you go through everything and you think, right, how am I going to fit this and tell this story? And that's what I find so interesting. Like Hannah and Katie, uh, they'd not been with us for very long at all when the Argentine families visited. Uh, when the when the um, graves had been identified um, and we went over to that we filmed it we took photographs you know within 24 hours their stuff was on Al Jazeera Washington Post BBC it, you know it's just everywhere um, you get so many opportunities here to be to be have your have your stuff um, shown around the world 
day to day at FITV from what I remember. Obviously we all lived in, in the same house so we all strolled down to work together or rolled in. Um, we were one of the few offices I think that started at nine rather than eight so it was always that quick check the phones and check the emails first thing, make sure no one was too much of an early bird for us. Um, yeah and then it was trying to balance or making sure we've got enough stories to fill the programme isn't it? You have to chat with everyone and, and see what you've got going on and um, try and try and get a few of the easy ones done early in the week, <laughs> try and build a bit of um, bit of space for the sort of slightly more passion projects that you got as well, try and put a bit of side, time aside for them. Um, it's obviously a, a pretty much a 24-7 job as well, you know, we tried to keep office hours but um, you know, you're doing things that involve the community and the community is around all the time so there's plenty of evening stuff and weekend stuff as well so I'm not really sure there was a typical day. Uh, you know, there'd always always be some curveball thrown in that you had to react to and to, to jump up and head out into the town or camp or wherever it was. Um, so yeah, it kept you on your toes. <laughs> yeah, so I'll do mine. I, now, if you, so if you're 6.31 and he's six minutes and I've still got the FITV to do and we've got Pride to do as well, I think... I think it's full show, it sounds a bit. So every Monday morning, uh, we always meet up, all, the, all my work colleagues, etc. everyone at FITV, and we all go through stories and uh, pieces that we want to do during this week or whatever's in the headline news. Um, and then straight away, as soon as the meeting's finished, we get allocated different stories so we can choose them or we can actually go up and, and organise it ourselves. Um, so the first thing is obviously get all your interviews sorted out. So you go on the phone, you've got a massive phone book with all the contact numbers um, and we get on the phone and try and contact as well the, the relevant people. Um, in your interview. Following that, you write it on the magical board, uh, just so people know, as an organisation, just so um, your colleagues know where you're at and, and where, where you're going to with your story. Um, then you go and find the place where, you, where you're going to interview, try and get a nice area, uh, nice, you know, to talk to them. Get all the equipment together, so the camera, the tripod, the zoom, the audio, um, etc. And then you go to the place and interview them using your questions. Um, that you're trying to deliver the story through. Then once you've done your interview, you have to do the magical editing, so make sure it's quite, quite, you know, uh, quite interesting for people to watch. Um, and then every, every, every morning we always have an update on where people are at, what, what people are doing. Um, and then after that, on a Thursday, the show goes out, so we send in our packages to the editor, and then following that, 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 that's where it gets like a quality control so sometimes it might be alright sometimes it might be a, a frame that you might need to work on so you sort that out and then after that it's ready for the, for the show that goes out on Falcons television. I like the fact that every day is different here you can be reporting on anything and everything you can be going on trips you can be filming whales you can do wildlife and to an extent there's flexibility in what you want to do. FITV nurtures your passion do you know, and, and, and figures out, right, okay, so-and-so likes wildlife, let's push them to do that. Um, and I don't think you'd get that in any other company. It's not just news items that we film. We obviously film a lot of community events. And sometimes they're very, very easy to film. You just go, you show up, you take some shots, you take some B-roll, you get some interviews, done. Bring it home, pack it up together, stick a voiceover on it, done. But sometimes it's got to be really precisely planned and one of the big things for that is the marathon or the half marathon um, because we've got to be there at the start we've got to get a clean shot at the start we've got to get a clean shot of the winner coming over the line I think once in the 10 years that I've been doing it we missed the winner coming over the line um, I had this great idea one year that we were going to get these walkie-talkies. Um, so I bought these walkie-talkies for us all. They were, they'd got a 10 kilometre range. It was going to be brilliant. We were going to all talk by walkie-talkies. Yeah, they've only got a 10 kilometre range if you've got line of sight. So the moment it's down in the dip in Stanley, you've got no hope of, of hearing anyone. So um, we, will, we have to rely on mobile phones and, and things like that. So it's planned with military precision, really. So there's somebody at the start, there's somebody about a mile down the road to sort of plot ourselves out along the route. Um, so somebody gets the start. Usually the person who gets the start of the Stanley Marathon as it is now, 
and the person who gets the start can quickly go over to the Malvina House Hotel, log on to the FITV web um, internet and upload that start straight away, done. Then back again, in position, ready for them having gone down to Moody Brook and come back again. One person's job is to track the person in the lead and that's it. Everyone else is getting general, general shots, general B-roll of everything. Um, but the person on the leader has to update everyone as they're going along. And then we're back at the start, uh, ready for the, for the winner to come across the line. Um, what we find is it's probably best to stick up a, a tripod, leave it in one position, because then we can crossfade between each person coming across the line. Because it, I mean, you wouldn't, ha if we were anywhere else, we wouldn't do that. We would get like the first three across the line and that would be it. But because it's a community event, the people who've taken three and a half hours to go round, the, you know, they've given it their all. So let's give them a little bit back. So yeah, we are there. We are there until the very last person, usually till the very last person comes across the line um, and get them focused. They've done a good job. They've done a really good job. I do the marathon, but I injured my knee. And um, I thought, right, I've got to do the marathon, but in a different way. And unfortunately, this is how I decided to do it. How are you feeling at the moment, all right? Uh, aching from about there downwards. And are you looking, what are you looking forward to doing when you finish? <laughs> Stopping. <laughs> and to find out why I'm standing out here on Ross Road West at half past midnight, stay tuned. Is that, does that make sense? Michelle Winard, she did a lot of, um, when she did her B-roll, she sort of, she got a lot of footage where she films in between vegetation. It's very artistic, it's lovely. Um, Hannah, when she does pieces to camera, she tends to <laughs> put her fingers together like this and do this kind of stuff. Especially, she did a whole piece on hay fever, <laughs> like this which Thomas then christened as Papa de Poopy Hands. So that's what she, that's what they're called in the office now, Papa de Poopy Hands, when you're really stressing a point like this. Um, you watch, she does it an awful lot. Thomas, idiosyncrasy of Thomas, Thomas faffed with his tie far too much. When I was editing the show, um, every five minutes he's straightening his tie. So um, I did, I collected them all together um, and did a whole, tie straightening reel, so he's got that. We haven't got a lot of money, but no, not surprised. We haven't got a lot of money. We don't spend a lot of money on stuff. We've got um, Mark Spruce's parents' old underlay on our walls to help with um, soundproofing. We've got the Malvina House Hotel's old sofa um, covered with a piece of fabric. Um, you know, we've got an auto cute that is fantastic, but it's homemade. It's, it's not a, you know, it's not, one that you can buy, it's, it's been homemade and it works a treat. So um, what we do is we connect the, so it's, it's basically a screen with a piece of glass at 45 degrees and then the camera shoots through the, through the glass. Um, so we can see the words reflected onto the glass um, so you can't see them. Um, and then that is connected to a computer and we use an online um, software that, that, that puts the auto cue reverses it, flips it and stuff like that. It can be temperamental. It's not the easiest of things to work. Your local brewery is set to be moving. Location. <laughs> More than £2,000 is already in a special chartered bank. I missed... Account? <laughs> <laughs> no, I missed that. The Advent Market held at the Parish Hall on Saturday afternoon. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> So don't go yeah, too far, yeah, just keep so, going. Um, no, 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 start. You're going the wrong way now. In addition, there will be a... Sorry. In addition... I'm going to beat this thing with a hammer in a minute. ...that we have not been able to deliver the upgrade planned for January. <laughs> <laughs> in response, the Prime Minister reiterated our government's commitment to consult with and involve overseas territories in some decision making thing or other whilst at the same whilst at the same time putting on a putting on appearances. It's seven years old that computer, just give it a break. 
Okay, we'll go from the top then. Oh well, it's, it's such a <coughs> difficult job for you. <laughs> So if you uh, left click, you can drag it down to the bottom, press the space bar just the once and again, hold your finger on it and the down arrow, mouse control, yeah, click on that, try it. Is there like a little crosshair thing in yeah. the thingy? Just go up and down like that. Grab the centre line and drag it down a little bit. So up and down arrow, there we go. You drag your finger down to slow it down. I prefer the buttons. So if you click on mouse control, hopefully, um, it will have sorted itself out now. Stay there, don't move. Okay, if there's a problem, we'll just carry on. Um, so just try and make sure if, if those words are coming too high up on the screen and we're speaking too quickly because we're trying to keep up with it, you pause it and you go again. Into the settings on the bottom right, please. Bottom right okay. of the thing, there'll be um, like a settings thing. Yeah. Can you click that and can you flip horizontal? Hang on a minute, we bit that out, didn't we? Go back down. 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 No, no, sorry, up. Yeah. And then when the auto cue is actually working, um, sometimes, you know, it, I tend to write the script mostly, but if I'm not here or I'm busy, someone else will have stepped in and, and written the script. Sometimes, you know, it's a story where we can't get, can't make it simple. For TV, it's, it, you've got to understand it straight away. You can't. It, unlike the newspaper, you can reread. If it's an odd word, you can reread it. You can reread it and go and look it up. For TV and for radio, for that matter, it's got to be. You've got to understand it straight away. So the script has got to be pitched in that way. Then, of course, we've got to actually say the words in properly with the right intonation when you're saying it. It has enjoyed everything from cakes and books to betting on a chicken and rat splatting. Chicken and rat splatting. <laughs> On the Falklands or connected 2D Falklands have been asked to get creative by decorating or embellishing a supply 400mm by 400mm frame. <laughs> <laughs> After 10 years of pulling a fire engine up the front road, the fire brigade this year... <laughs> it sounds like they spent the last 10 years <laughs> pulling a fire engine up the front road. Adults will swim 1,500 kilometres. No, they won't. It's not 1,500 metres. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Sorry, I just cut, cut and paste. I cut and paste, from, ah. cut and paste from last year. Still to come on this programme. <laughs> yeah, I stopped writing at that point. <clears throat> Are you Peter Judge as well? Yes. Okay. There will be... No, I'm ditching that. Oh, is it off? Mm. Okay. Sorry, go back. Go work back work. to sexual assault. Oh, this isn't a whole great big read. It is a great big read. With Falklandale and students achieving so well in their studies, I took a look at no, secondary didn't. education. We I keep we reading things. That. We ditched that. Since the year 2000, the bar... No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just get busted in your head. Yeah. <laughs> other, than, other than that. Maps of salted roads within Stanley are posted up in post... Oh, post shops? What? Who wrote this? <laughs> Aidan Morris caught up with the governor to... It should be His Excellency the governor. You read it and approved it. I know, go down, <laughs> go down. Delays in the handing in of documents relating to the case. Yes, it is a very long sentence. Ronnie wrote it, didn't in, No, I wrote it. Oh. It's me, it's got my fingerprints all over it. <laughs> well, it but you would know better than to no, write it's No, it's a long sentence in search of a full stop. That's what it is. And we went along to see what makes a good ram so valuable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give a straight face to that. We spoke to MLA Stacey Bragger about the plan and whether it was actually a colossal waste of time and effort. <laughs> what have you gone for that? <laughs> it's fine, you've okay. got until 11 o'clock. You've <sighs> written less words. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we would get a move on. <laughs> hopefully this will become a regular section and we can finally get some titles made for it. And hopefully we can get some titles made for this section too. Let's <laughs> read what it says! It, it is what it says. It's just like under A at Porter. We are reading what it says. <laughs> That's, it says it's written twice. <laughs> this programme, watch as they dance the night away. No, that's last week. Plants have been growing, such as the Deuce and Moonwort and the Spider Flower, which is only found in one other place in the world. Was the, it? Don't. God. 
Just read what's on the on the script, uh, Daniel. But I can't just read far what's enough. on the script. I can't. Up an adult safeguarding board that would help to seek seek to help. Why am I? I think no. <laughs> There's something. <laughs> I blame the thing, you know. The Latin fly. No, that's me. The current global pandemic. The Falcon Islands going. No, we're ditching this. We're ditching this. Cool. I wrote this. I should know what I'm saying. There are words that you avoid. Um, legislative <laughs> is not the easiest word to say, and we have to say it most weeks. If I'm writing the script, I will be honest with you. I try and give it to the other person so they have to say it instead. Um, there are some very tricky words, and also sometimes it's not the words in itself, like cultural heritage. It's it's fine saying like that, but when it's coming off another sentence and going in, it could be a little bit trickier. Members of the Legislative Assembly, the uh, Legislative... Was presented to the Legislative... I hate that word. It's really hard. I hate that word. <laughs> Making its way through the Legislative Assembly. Back up. <laughs> it's paid to the members of the Legislative... Come on. Sorry. The Falklands put on their pimp... <laughs> their pimp... <laughs> Explain more about the privatisation <laughs> scheme. <laughs> Members of the Legislative Assembly. Sorry, can I do that again? Falcon and Island. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. That's it. Or Caroline Montgomery of 51272. <laughs> <laughs> Honourable Mike Summers, MLA, has returned from a recent trip to Calendar. We spoke to MLA Summers about the trip, meeting friends from Laboreal and his new title of Lord Penguin. <laughs> did you say calendar? I did say calendar. <laughs> oh my god. The case of a fishing vessel, Figaro, which was owned... Should we call it Figaro? Fig As a goodbye, the group performed a concert at the cathedral, which included traditional African a cappella alongside organ and trumpet, trumpet accompaniments, which I might have to do again, which included traditional African a cappella alongside organ and trumpet accompaniments. <laughs> oh god, <I'm> so <laughs> Sorry! which included traditional African a cappella alongside organ and trumpet accompaniments. <laughs> As a goodbye, the group performed a concert at the cathedral, which... <laughs> there will be changes to the departure of the air bridge due to the UK moving to the clocks... Moving to the... Why the... Moving to the clocks! The standard Charlie... Charlie? Charlie? Nationales prosqueros. No. <laughs> And speaking of speed limits, there's a temporary speed limit on place. On place, in place. How is that my fault? That <laughs> says on. Right. Miss, I wrote a book. I shouldn't do typos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Got a little bit too sassy for a Thursday <laughs> afternoon there. I surprised myself. The Reapers ate to two victory over the beasts. <laughs> <laughs> For two days of discussions on fish and squid sock. <laughs> oh, we knew it was coming. I knew we knew it was coming. coming. Squid, squid socks. socks. From Ajax Bay to Point St. Carlos. Point St. Carlos. That's a new place in the Falklands. Let's go to the top of that one then. I've addressed the United Nations Special Committee on Decolonisation, known as Decolonisation. <laughs> Executive Council approved the nomination for Grant Buds in recognition of his loyalty and mat meritorious. <laughs> <laughs> Every year! Every year! The government has been working with the UK government to progress discussions on fish and squid stocks in the South Atlantic. For the ship spotters amongst our viewers, you may have seen some trawlers coming into port as they transship their scatchet. Scatches. What the hell is a sketch? <laughs> <laughs> they transcript their sketches of squeege. Led by South Georgia government and the Norwegian director of cultural heritage that gives you the chance to step. Uh, you want to do that one again? Heritage. Led <laughs> <laughs> by South Georgia government and the Norwegian director of cultural heritage. <laughs> cultural heritage. That's so hard. Cultural heritage. And as you saw there, the display Tom was standing next to is an interactive kiosk at the museum. This is a permanent exhibit funded by South Georgia government and the Norwegian director of cultural heritage. What? <laughs> what? I said it three times. Cultural heritage, cultural heritage, cultural heritage. Yeah, Norwegian fine. director of cult. 
<laughs> it's that it's coming off of the director. There's too many. Take syllables. a pause. Take a pause. Norwegian director of cultural heritage. So yeah, that's take a fine. Pause. Yeah. Then ornithological, from supplies of binoculars and cameras to books, clothing, and artists. Uh, oh, <laughs> you did ornithological. I know. I was. So well. That's why I was so amazed at myself. <laughs> Celestial. Celestial. There's no R in it. Celestial. No. Celestial. Celestial. Got you. Celestial phenomenon as a partial sound. Oh, you can't say it now. <laughs> right, okay. And they saw a rare celestial phenomenon as a partial solar eclipse. <laughs> Oh, oh God. God. Monday saw a rare celestial phenomenon as a partial solar eclipse was visible from the Falklands. Montes Alpha M, extremely limited in production, perfectly balanced, full-bodied and voluptuous. Montes Wines, at Stanley Services. Welcome back. The Falkland Islands Company have operated their new warehouse on Opened their... even. Oh, have opened it. How did you get out of this then? <laughs> you can't start with that! <laughs> right. So, Andrew, is it because you're so old now that they won't start that again? <laughs> Just do something nice! Okay, Christ. Christ. Right, okay. <laughs> Did you fail the fitness test? <laughs> <laughs> right, so are you involved in it this year or are you far too old now? She starts like that every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Sensible questions, professional journalism. Sometimes, it, I mean, we try and film the news at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes we've got to push it back to the afternoon. Sometimes we're in a mad rush. Sometimes it's late in the afternoon. Sometimes there's work going on. Um, it can be, it can be tricky. Ahoy and avast me our ease. It'll be international talk like a pirate day. So gather round mateys, cause here be 60 seconds on news. Some what? Gym lad. Arr, gym lad. Roaming the easier warriors. I can't, I can't wait. Let me <laughs> and that be it. Arr. Can I leave this on my face all day? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Do we say welcome back? No, you said ahoy mateys. <laughs> pirates be. Welcome back. <clears throat> okay, okay. Okay. One minute. <laughs> Should I, I don't look at her, right? I just stare and smile. <laughs> Why is she on the bed? <laughs> right, so we're doing this. <clears throat> Ahoy, mateys. Tis time to flap your jaws like a buccaneer for it be international talk like a pirate day. Yeah, shiver me timbers, we owe some bucket. Right, we should just stop that now. We should just stop that. Ready? Yeah. I'm not. Oh, you and have asked me hearties. It'd be international talk like a pirate day, and here'd be 60 seconds of news. Can you hear me over my stomach growling, Dan? Yes. That's all right then. Can you hear my stomach rumbling? No. Okay. I can. <laughs> Should have had a biscuit before we started. Mm. Yeah, don't, it's mm, me. So, so it's me. Mm -hmm. Serious face. Really relaxed, and then Paula says in my ear, now you're live. <laughs> and then, yeah. Okay, we've got two minutes until the ads, sorry. If I, if I, if I like glaze over, that's because Paula's talking to me. Who's talking so loudly in the corridor? Oh. Sorry, I want to do that in a Queen's voice. And all our people. 
Hey, God bless her you and all everyone. who fly in her. You done? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> five three. Five three. So it's six three, then five three. Okay. You got this. Yes, well, I won't remember that. Life drawing is nudie men. Oh, all women. All women. Don't be sexist. This is going in the bloopers. The stuff that uh, Paula <laughs> likes to paint is the uh, that, that life drawing. That can't go in the bloopers. <laughs> She'll kill us. <laughs> I've never seen you on this side. Haven't you? No. Do you want to swap over? No, because then if we are suddenly attacked, you need to have your sword arm free. You see, that's why men sit on the right. Uh, do you want to just leave your glasses there like a yes. proper news reporter? Because I might need them at any minute if there's an emergency. <laughs> I'm finding it hard to read today. Okay. I'm making my large calves again. <laughs> right, I'm ready. Right, cankles. <laughs> Incredible <laughs> it's job opportunities. Excellent, thank you. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> that is still the animation we're using, isn't it? It is yeah, still cool. the animation we're using. Yeah. <laughs> right, otherwise it's stupid we haven't just done that. <laughs> you ready? Mm-hmm. We've got so much reading, I'm so not looking forward to this. Because apparently I'm, I might have zoned out on that because all I was thinking of was, I think we're going to ditch it. Can we go back to that one? Kay, kay, Let's just go kay, back. Can kay, you just do that kay, one again? Because I was kay, looking kay. like... I can only press my knees together for so long. So. <laughs> Through to home baking and flower arranging. Did you just hear Steve's deep breath in and out? Yeah, can we do that one again though? Your tie up to the right. We'll have letters. What's the. Oh, there we go. Hello and welcome to Falklands I wasn't and Focus. Even looking at the camera. Paula Foams is not focusing. From FITV. Oh! And ordered to pay £150 in costs. Look at what my hair looks like. <laughs> Why is what's happening today? We're not even halfway through. <laughs> Doors slamming, you sweat. <laughs> this is so, uh, this has got to be, in anyway, right. Well, it's good to know you're exasperated three minutes into getting back. <laughs> Have a massive conversation outside our window, why don't you? If you're looking for somewhere. If you're looking for somewhere <laughs> to have a loud conversation, come and come stand on. outside FITV. <laughs> we don't need to do any of this because it's all out of vision. And we did that already. So we'll do the ending and that's it. Oh God, how many people can slam blinking doors here? And then there are some days you just can't even get the words out to even start. Do I normally sit on this side? No, I don't normally sit on this side. I don't know yeah, why I was it's like you. Oh, so you, you went straight for the poor side. I did, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Tuesday's Forkless in Focus. Forkless? Great start. I know. From the top, do you think? Okay, can you give me a 30 second warning, please? Welcome what? back. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in this programme, stuff, things and more stuff. Do you know what? It would have been a lot better if we did film this this morning when my hair didn't look like this. Tell me about it. Hello and welcome oh. to Very Warm in the Falklands. I'm sweaty and this is... Sticky. <laughs> all in all, I've enjoyed my time at FITV very, very much. Very much. I've enjoyed coming in. I hope the rest of the team feel the same way. It's an easy place to work. It's not... There's stressful days, but it's an enjoyable stress. So far my time at FITV has been really fun and really enjoyable so I just hope that the rest of my time here is as varied and as enjoyable as the first few months have been. But yeah, it's good. <laughs> I think that everyone who's been involved with FITV from the beginning should be really proud of what they've managed to achieve and the fact that such a small little station starting off with, you know, limited resources has now morphed into something that has tens of thousands of views on YouTube and has really helped create a visual record of what life has been like for the past 10 years in the Falkland Islands and I think everyone involved in that should be just really proud of what they've managed to achieve. I feel really lucky to have been um, a part of FITV and obviously coming up to the 10 years anniversary is amazing. Hopefully the company will run for another 10 years and I'd, I'd like to think that we will evolve as well with new technology and new times and the way things are going. Um, I can't believe that I've been here for three. I'm going to say, will I be here for another three? Who knows? Um, but 
I'm excited for the future and it'll be interesting to see what happens next. So that's it for this week's edition of Falklands in Focus. As mentioned earlier in the programme, you can watch previous episodes of our programme on our website, fitv.co.fk, where you can subscribe to watch a little bit of the Falklands wherever you are in the world. Wherever you are in the world. What did I say? I don't know, but I'm just saying. I'm just telling you, re listener, <laughs> watcher, reader, no viewer. <laughs> I was stressing. Anywhere in the world, we are worldwide. FITV is global. <laughs> so you can watch previous episodes on our program of our... <laughs> on our program of our website. And we'll see you right Friday. <laughs> we'll see you next week at Friday at 7... I oh, see. It was fine the first time we did it. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs> yes. Done. Done. Wow. Good luck with that one. Yeah. That's us done! Yeah! Actually, I need that to edit. Sorry. Yeah! <laughs> Look at us, we got all the way there! Oh, I don't fingers crossed throughout all breathe, of that. Breathe, breathe. <laughs>